Welcome back everybody to YouTube's premier storyboarding channel, Ink and Grow Rich. Today, I wanted to discuss your portfolio. In order to have even a chance of getting hired, you're gonna need to show the world what you can do. Now, traditionally, an artist would draw up some samples, put them neatly into a spiffy little portfolio, and then dutifully go around town just begging people to look at it. Fortunately, this is the 21st century, folks. I mean, we're in the future. Precisely. Today, it's never been easier to ram your crummy little chicken scratches down someone's throat. Because today, we've got a little thing called the internet. Which means the modern equivalent of your portfolio is, of course, your website and your online presence. But more on that in an upcoming video. Suffice it to say, until you have a job, getting a job should be your full-time job. Now, that's all nice and fine, but that brings us to the inevitable question and topic of today's post. What exactly do I draw? What kind of content should a potential storyboard artist be regularly posting in order to get hired? Well, the simple answer is, of course, if you want a job drawing storyboards, you should be posting storyboards. To that end, and by request I might add, I've decided to release a regular series of videos which I call Portfolio Projects. In each of these videos, I will select one of my former jobs and upload all of the creative that I received before I began drawing. On through all that material, you can then move forward and start creating real-world, professional storyboard samples. A few things to note before I post the first job. First of all, in this industry, you'll occasionally be asked to sign an NDA, which stands for Non-Disclosure Agreement, which is essentially a legal document which states that you agree to never share any of that material with anybody. So obviously, those jobs, they won't appear on this website. Secondly, in the interest of maintaining privacy, for each of the jobs I did select, I went ahead and blurred out any of the names or faces that might have appeared in the materials. I'm sure you can understand. Next thought I wanted to share is that you should attempt to draw each of these spots on your own without looking at the finished spots. As I've already mentioned, all these jobs are a year or two old, otherwise I wouldn't feel comfortable posting them. Otherwise, I wouldn't feel comfortable posting them, so you could go online and view each of these finished spots. I'd encourage you not to, because if you see the completed commercial, it may influence the way you draw. I want you to avoid just creating a carbon copy of the existing spot, but rather, strive to create something that has your own unique style added to it. So feel free to go off script. If you feel like you can come up with something more interesting, by all means, change up any of the suggested camera angles. Play around with it, make it your own. Play around with it, make it yours. Developing your own style is absolutely going to help you get hired. Directors are always looking for people who can contribute new and interesting ideas. Artists that can toss a few visual ideas out on the table definitely have an advantage over those who can. Endeavor to be one of them. And the final thing I wanted to mention is that in a well-rounded portfolio, you should have samples that represent a wide range of products. I remember when I first started out, I had drawn a Purina commercial and put that in my portfolio. Next thing you know, I was booking animal spots left and right. You see, people who lack any artistic skill they seem to have difficulty accepting the idea that if you can draw a car, you can probably draw a shark or a house or whatever. They don't quite understand that you can either draw or you can't. So if they need a storyboard artist for a cat food commercial, they want to see a cat in your portfolio. For some reason, they just need to know that you can draw a cat. I had a conversation years back with another up and coming storyboard artist named Brandon Peterson. We were comparing notes and he said to me, dude, draw up some samples of musicians. I added a few guitar players in my portfolio. Next thing you know, I'm booking tons of music videos. I took his advice and sure enough, a month or so later, I was working on a Michael Jackson video. Keep in mind, this was about 20 years ago. So I would encourage you to have a car commercial, a food commercial, a lifestyle commercial, animals, musicians, cell phones, you get the idea. Variety is the spice of life, kids. Well, variety and cinnamon. You got variety and cinnamon, well, the world is your oyster. With all of that out of the way, I present to you the first video in the Portfolio Projects lineup, Jack in a Box. For those of you who do not live on the west coast of America, Jack in a Box is a fast food chain here, and they've got just about a thousand commercials out there involving their mascot, Jack. If you're not familiar with them, a quick Google search will show you all you need to know. Let's get this show on the road. All right, so when you click on the link provided in the comments section below, you'll find a script, a director's treatment, location photos, wardrobe, and casting. This is a fairly typical package of materials that you'll get at the start of each job, and is all collectively known as the creator. So anytime somebody says some variation of, I'll send you the creator first thing in the morning, this is what they're referring to. Let's go ahead and take a brief look at each one of them now. First thing you'll notice in the upper left corner here is both the name of the campaign and the name of this particular spot. 
The name of this campaign is If You Crave It, We Serve It, and it consists of three commercials, Basement, Top Floor, and Wedding. The entire campaign revolves around the idea that Jack is the leader of this Crave Squad, which is a small team of guys that drive around in a surveillance van, which covertly listens in on anybody who might be in need of a burger. The whole thing's supposed to be a spoof off the late 70s, early 80s American TV shows like uh, Starsky and Hutch, Chips, or The a -Team. In each of these spots, once Jack picks up on somebody in need, the van will crash into a location causing an obscene amount of damage and mayhem. But the people will be so happy to see him that, hey, they just don't care. Nobody cares! The three scripts are called Basement, Top Floor, and Wedding, and are included in the comment section below. Read through those first, and then move on to the Director's Treatment. The Director's Treatment is a document he or she puts together at the pitch stage when they're still bidding for the job. Essentially, it's a broad overview of how they intend to shoot the spots. As you can see here, it's filled with lots of useful photos and includes the director's thoughts on things like casting, performance, lighting, and overall approach to filmmaking. Another thing that the director will do is that they'll break down each script in a bit more detail, essentially spelling out their thoughts on the story and hopefully adding a bit of padding to the script. Now, in this particular case, you'll notice that the director is referencing three scripts called Napkins, Garage, and Top Floor. But feel free to read through the treatment anyway, because it still offers up his thoughts on the entire campaign. When you're done with the director's treatment, we'll take a look at the locations. It should come as no surprise that the document called Locations contains photos of... This is where it gets tricky. You guessed it, the locations. In this case, we've got the set design for top floor and basement, and then photos of the physical locations for wedding as well as the driving footage shots. The reason the first two are sets rather than existing locations is because they're going to repeatedly have to smash the van through a wall, so it needs to be something that they can rebuild over and over again. In the wedding spot, the van is simply going to burst out from behind some bushes so they can get away with using a physical set. Next up, we've got casting. We were lucky enough to get a casting document with this job, which is not always the case. Sometimes you'll just get casting specs, which simply describe the ideal actor, like uh, African-American woman, or elderly Asian man, Caucasian family, and so on and so forth. Feel free to draw the actors that were cast for the spot, or go ahead and make up your own. If you do the latter, however, just remember to diversify. And finally on this job, we've got wardrobe. As I've mentioned earlier, wardrobe is very unusual. You'll only receive a wardrobe document if you're working on a fashion commercial, such as an Old Navy, a Gap, or a TJ Maxx spot, or if the commercial you're working on has a very specific wardrobe, like a period piece, or in our case, a spoof on 1970s television. Okay, now what? And that is the final document in today's creative. There are three spots here for you to toy around with. Take your time, draw these up, and you'll be three spots closer to getting hired.